guys, today's video is all about helping you come up with lesson ideas for the subject of teaching time. If that interests you, then keep on watching. My name is Samantha and I'm the owner of ActivaTeach. ActivaTeach is all about helping people who are special education teachers or elementary teachers come up with lesson ideas, teacher tips, teacher hacks, um, classroom management, things like that. If you are into that, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Also, after the video, if you like it, give this video a big thumbs up. Let's get into today's video. The first thing that I do when I start the unit of telling time is I think about the four levels to teach telling time in. So, ta-da, here they are. The first thing that you want to do is teach your students how to tell time to the hour. And then of course you move on to the half hour, the five minutes, and then you teach your students how to tell time to the minute. Basically, when I plan any unit, you know, because as special education teachers, a lot of us do not have a curriculum, I differentiate. I come up with my different levels because some students are going to understand the first level and then move on to the second, where some are going to stay in the first level, or some students might start off in the fourth level. I like to come up with all of my activity ideas for the first level, and then I also differentiate and I make those same activities or games for the second level, the third level, and the fourth level because I love to teach whole class, which can definitely be difficult in special education, but that's why I come up with these levels so that my students can be doing the same activity even if they're working on telling time to the hour versus telling time to the minute. My hope in making this video is that you will have a ton of resource ideas, um, game ideas, lesson ideas for telling time. So let's get into it. All of everything that I'm going to mention is are things that you can make or else they are also linked in the description down below if you don't want to make them. So here we go. Our first activity is color by time. Um, as you can see, I do not have a colored printer at home, so my husband colored in three of the crayons. He forgot one. That's okay, Blake. Thank you for your effort. So um, students will color nine o'clock orange, then they will color six o'clock green, red will be seven o'clock, and blue will be eight o'clock, as you can see. Um, so like I said, I like all of my students to be doing the same activity. So that was telling time to the hour. Here's telling time to the hour and half hour time to five minutes, and then lastly, of course, telling time to the minute. A lot of times in special education, I feel like our students are stuck doing a completely different activity than their peers, and I hate that. So that is why I always have the same activities going just at different levels for my students to meet the needs of everyone. Next on my computer, I'm going to pull up my students' favorite telling time activity. All right. Here it is. My students love doing drag and drop activities. They're really great because you can do them as a whole class um, on your smart board or you can assign them digitally on Google Slides. Students can do them on their own computer or iPad or else you can also make them math centers. So really the options are endless. So this is a drag and drop telling time to the minute activity and of course like I said you can differentiate and do um, time to the five minutes, um, to the hour, things like that. So let's get into it. So here is what our students will do. They will tell the time here on the clock, and this is 12, looks like 27. So they will drag and drop here. Here are a couple other slides, this or that, what time is it? So the correct answer is that it is 1016. The wrong answer is that it is not 1014. Here we kind of have a similar setup to the last one. Here's a true or false activity. Um, so this one is 11.04, so you would drag the circle here. So that those are kind of some ideas for drag and drop activities. Again, this is always a big hit with my students. They love anything interactive. Here is my next activity idea. Love this one, my students love it. This is um, tic-tac-toe. Who doesn't love tic-tac-toe? And really you can do this with any math subject. So I have my X's and O's here and students will figure out the time, then they'll put their X or their O on. And a big bonus is that they are learning social skills, which a lot of our students need to work on. So anytime I can incorporate math and social skills, I do every single day, every, every second that I can to help my students. So anyways, tic-tac-toe, lots of fun. Definitely recommend this resource. Great thing about this tic-tac-toe activity and basically all the other ones I'm going to talk about is that you can print them out or else they are also available digitally. So for tic-tac-toe, students will use the highlight feature on easel to make an X or make an O. Let's continue to the next resource. My next activity idea is task cards. 
who doesn't love task cards? So um, obviously these are leveled again, and my favorite thing about task cards, they double as a scavenger hunt activity. And what I mean is obviously you can use the task cards um, during math centers. You can also easily use them during whole group um, a million different ways. We've all used task cards before, but here is another way to use task cards. Here is a recording sheet. So what I do, I will tape these around the room, on the computer, everywhere, um, hide them around the room, and then students have to actually search and um, fill in this recording sheet with their answers. And then at the end, we go through, we talk about the answers as a class. I absolutely love to get my students out of their seats since we all know they sit there a lot throughout the day. I hate that. So this gets your students up and moving. So definitely recommend task cards and scavenger hunts. One more bonus to this activity. Again, it is easily differentiated because the levels have different colors. So I will tell one student, you need to go find all the purple task cards and fill out the recording sheet. You need to go find all of the blue cards and fill out the recording sheet. So students are work at their own level without even realizing it. All right guys, let's get on to our next. Next we have cut and paste. My students love using scissors and glue. Even high schoolers, they love it because it's more hands-on than just boring fill in the blank worksheets. All right, so cut and paste activities and then we have matching activities and I actually love to use these matching activities digitally on my smart board. I'll have one student figure out the first clock, this next student come up to the board and figure out the second clock and so Here's on. Here's another one of my students favorite. Kaboom! A lot of you have probably played Kaboom with printout papers where student, students pick a paper out of a cup. Well, I like to do it digitally. So the first thing you'll do, click here, and you can do this as a whole group or as centers. For whole group, you would split your class into two or maybe three, depending on how big your class size is. Um, and students will pick a number. So we'll go with number one here and the group will determine what time it is. And again, it incorporates social skills because our students are talking instead of just working individually. And the students will come up with the time and if they're right, they get a point. And if they're wrong, they do not get a point. Next, the next team will go on to number two and answer the question. If they're right, they get a point. If they're not right, they do not get a point. And then if students click a kaboom, you can either play where they just lose their turn or you can play where they lose all of their points if you wanna make it really interesting and competitive. So definitely recommend this game. My students get very competitive. They love coming up with their own team names and I love it. They learn a lot from it. The next activity idea that I have is this or that, this or that. If you haven't played it yet, you have to try this one. So this is another way that you can get your students up and moving. So you, the students will have a clock in the middle and then it has the two times here and students can either hold up a one if they think the first answer is correct or a two if they think the second answer is correct. And then you can talk as a class about what the answer is, but a better way to play it and the way you should play it is that you can have students go to the side of the room of the correct answer. This way your students are moving and out of their seat. You will just continue on to each slide and students will just keep moving back and forth throughout the room. It's a lot of fun and students love it. Boys ask me all of the time, when are we gonna play this or that again? So I try to incorporate this game a lot throughout all of my math subjects. I have two more ideas for you. Here is a fill in the blank packet. Um, this does not give students options for answers where a lot of the other resources I just named do give students um, options. So this makes them think a little bit more. So another way to differentiate, again, is you can have one student doing the cut and paste activity, one student doing this packet here, or you can have a student um, who maybe needs more of a visual do the matching worksheet. I also like to just mix and match my worksheets too and make them a packet and I can put them on their computers, which they really love to do that also. My last activity, well, it's not really an activity, it's more of an assessment, a quick assessment that I like to do at the end of every single math class that I have is a really quick one answer exit ticket. So I do this for any activity or any subject that I am teaching because it helps me see who is really understanding the things I am teaching and who is not, who might need some work on certain areas. And it's just one quick question so students can answer the question and then they can leave. So it's kind of the last final thing that they have to do before they leave the classroom. Right, guys, I really, really enjoyed sharing all of these ideas with you guys because when I was a first time teacher coming up with um, all of these activity ideas was super overwhelming, um, but now I feel like I have it together. So I hope that these really helped you. And 
gave you some great ideas that your students will love and truly learn from. Also, if you have any other ideas for telling time, you can comment them down below to help other teachers. Make sure you follow me on Instagram under ActivityTeach and Facebook. I also have five different Facebook pages that I now manage that I would love for you all to join. They are all special education based. I will link those down below. And as always, there are some freebies down in the description, some math freebies, make sure you grab those. Lastly, make sure you follow my channel and click the little bell to get notifications on when I make new videos. Um, I'm really enjoying getting to know you guys, um, other special education teachers throughout the world. It's been really fun and I plan on continuing to make more videos. So thank you guys for the inspiration and thank you for listening to me talk. All right, I better stop talking so we can end this video. Happy teaching, guys. Bye.